the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries located in Augusta, Georgia on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart Lowe's on Bobby Jones Expressway in the State 520 heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Sunday morning service, amen, along as with my members, amen, Brother Roland and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena and her beautiful husband, Stan, amen, my brother, Minister Harvey Cole and his beautiful wife, Sister Kimberly Cole, who had a birthday yesterday. God bless you. Amen. We love you. Thank you. Thank God for you still being in the land of the living and your children and your husband being able to love on you as well as your friends, as well as me also. Amen. Thank God. Amen. For joining also my brother, Minister. Amen. Amen. Harry Evans. Amen. And we want to continue to remember his wife. Sister Beverly Conyers Evans, who went on to be with the Lord on March the 4th of last year. She was a pillar of this ministry. We love her. We miss her. Amen. God bless the Sister Selena, a pillar of this ministry. I love you. Amen. I ain't nothing. I'm nothing without y'all. I'm nothing without y'all. Y'all make me feel special, Sister Selena. God bless you and your beautiful husband, Stan. In the name of Jesus. Want to continue to remember, amen, Spirit of Liberty's ministries, my sister church, amen, located in Casita, Columbus, Georgia, amen. They have services every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And amen, I tell you, if, if I did not think that today's message was from the Lord after hearing Pastor King this morning, I tell you, Pastor King, man, you was all in my message, sir. Thank you for the confirmation. Amen. We get messages from God sometimes, but it is a beautiful thing to get that confirmation to let you know that, amen, that uh, you are in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Line upon line, precept upon precept, word, amen, agreeing with word. Join Pastor King and his beautiful wife, Sister Donna King, every Sunday morning and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And I'm here to tell you right now, if you, uh, if you listen to Pastor King's message this morning, and then you listen to my message today, and then Pastor King going to come right back and, and close this thing out on Tuesday night. Amen. Hallelujah. The, the three messages in Pastor King, you'll see the, the combination of what you spoke this morning with what I'm going to say today versus the way I know that you're going to close it out Tuesday night. Because the Spirit agrees with the Spirit, amen, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am on YouTube. There are over 300 posts and messages on my YouTube channel. You ought to join them and be blessed, amen. Hallelujah. Today's message, imaginations of the heart versus the living Word of God. Hallelujah. Notice I did not say the Word of God. I said the imaginations of the heart versus the living word of God. Why? Because, because imaginations are alive. And so when you got something alive, the only thing that can defeat something that's alive is something that's other. God bless you, Bridget. I love you. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you, Bridget, for joining me in the name of Jesus. Genesis 6 and 5 reads on this wise, it says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. The wickedness of man was great in the earth. Hallelujah. Where do you think our bodies come from? They come from the dust of the ground of the earth. So we can just go on and say man's body. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in his body. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually was only evil continually. Let us pray. Good God bless you, Sister Ann. I love you. Thank you for joining your brother this morning. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we want to thank you for another opportunity to come up for your presence and to hear your word. Your word is living, and we're living. But you are the living that is eternal. We are the living that is only a vapor. Oh God, that we may 
hallelujah, appeal to you to impart unto us your eternal living tonight. We will not disrespect it. We will not disagree with it. We will not cast it down. We will receive it and we will begin to allow it to live in us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we love you today. Thank you for everybody that's going to join me today. Thank you for everybody that's going to hear this message today. Oh, God, we love you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. The thoughts and the imaginations of the heart of man. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart. Hallelujah. Every imagination of the thoughts of our heart is on the evil continually. Hallelujah. Ministry is hard. People, you know, I, pe pe people want to be in the ministry. I'm saying, I see people, they be like, God, uh, God called me into the ministry. God called me into the ministry. God got a call on my life. I remember the first time somebody told me that uh, that God, that I had a call on my life, and I was like, you know, y'all like to speak stuff on people. Because, you know, people want to be in ministry, but they don't want to live the life that ministry demands that we live. Ministry is hard. Why? Because ministers have to deliver the living word of God to saved and unsaved family members and friends. We have to deliver it to them. We have to deliver not the word of God. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, 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 no. We, because, because, because the, the, the living word of God. We have to deliver the living word of God to saved and unsaved family members and friends that live in the world of imaginations. Saved and unsaved family members and friends that we love to death. The ones who were happy to hear that we were called into the ministry, but hate us for teaching the living word of God. I'm talking about the living word of God today. I'm not talking about the I'm not talking about the written word of God. I'm talking about the living. I'm talking about getting the written on the inside and allowing the written to come alive on the inside of the earth. We love y'all to death. We love y'all to death. We love you, the ones. We love the ones who was happy to hear. The, the, the family members of mine, the friends of mine, they was happy to hear that Red was a minister. But they hate us. They hate you. They hate me for teaching the living word of God. Hallelujah. I, here at Christ Our Life Ministries, I teach the living word of God. I don't know what your church teaches. I don't know what you was raised up in. I don't know what type of doctrine you came under. But at Christ Our Life Ministries, here is taught the living word of God. It is, I'm not, I don't teach the law. The law is not the living word of God. Jesus Christ is the living word of God. The Bible tells us the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory that is of the only begotten of the Father, the living word of God. Hallelujah. But our, our saved and unsaved family members that we love to death, the ones who were happy to hear that we were called into the ministry, but haters were teaching the word of God because it offends their worldly lifestyle. It offends their worldly lifestyle. Nothing, nothing brings greater pain to my heart than the thought of a saved and unsaved, than the thought of saved and unsaved family members and friends who imagines, believes that I do not love them because I really, really do. And the ones that imagines and believes that I don't love them, that it, it, it vexes, it vexes my righteous soul. It vexes my righteous soul. 
The Bible says, amen, in 2 Peter 2 and 8, it says, for that righteous man Lot, that righteous man read, amen, hallelujah, dwelling among them in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds, with their behavior, with their behavior in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, vexing me because I know, because God bless the sister king of love. Because I know, because I, in seeing and hearing, I can see it when I get around them. I can, and I can hear it in their voices. I can hear it all the way down. I'm in Augusta, Georgia. I can hear it all the way to North Carolina to Virginia. I can hear it. I call them on the phone. Sometimes they don't even answer my phone call. It, but, but you know what? But I'm trying to figure out why ain't. My family members that know that I love them not answering my phone calls. I'm talking to my cousins today. I'm talking to my, my aunts today. I'm talking to my family in North Carolina and in Virginia today. Because y'all can't handle your nephews, your cousins, your uncles preaching. But my soul is vexed, my, my believing soul is vexed because I'll be like, because I, I'm, I can take, I can take every one of my family members back home and, 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 and they know my behavior. Do not confuse my behavior with, with my ministry. It, it's two different things. My behavior around you, you cannot knock my behavior. Don't stand, that goes for anybody that knows me. You can, you, you can't knock my behavior because I know how I conduct myself in the presence of people. You can only knock my ministry. You can't knock my behavior. I will, I will take anybody that they face. And tell them, you better check me. Because you know I got it. You know how I behave in the presence of people. Now my ministry is a total different thing. Mm -mm, ministry totally different. Because you, you too busy looking at the fact that I'm your nephew, cousin, friend. You, you think, you, 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 you putting that higher than, than, the, than what I do every Thursday and every Sunday. What I do every Thursday and every Sunday, you better not come on my Facebook page thinking that you're going to hear from Ricky Red, Roderick Red, Sergeant Red, Muster Red, Drill Sergeant Red. He not here. Mm -mm, no, no, no. You're just looking at the outward appearance. The living word of God. I preach and teach the living word of God. If you're not, if you're not coming on here to hear me, me preach and teach the living word of God, then I would kindly ask you to stay off my Facebook page if it's going to affect our relationship because when I come around you, I'm going to come around you with a behavior of love. I'm going to come around you with love, and but then when I get around you, you got all these imaginations, the forming of new thoughts and suggestions in the mind because you can't get past the living word of God that I preach that you're not living. God bless you, Bubba Jim. I love you. Sinny City Autumn. Speaking that Turkish to my father-in-law in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What enables me to handle that pain? What enables me to handle that pain? The living word of God. The living word of God. The living word of God, hallelujah, because my mind is stayed on him, he, he, he keeps me in perfect peace. Because my mind is stayed on him, he keeps me in perfect peace. But Pastor King, even though he keeps me in perfect peace, I can still feel the behaviors of people that can't handle my ministry. That they can't handle the delivery of the word of God that they claim to know themselves. Philippians 4 and 7 says, and the peace of God. See, I got the peace of God. Every, everything, everything about my life is peaceful. Everything about my life is peace. Everything about my even though I'm married to a girl that ain't thinking about living for God, even though I got a son and a daughter that ain't thinking about living for God, 
Even though I got a wife and a son and a daughter that sees my very behavior, sees my love for ministry, but don't, but still live their own life. I don't bother them. They don't bother them. I'm going to preach the word of God. My, my, my wife, my son, and my daughter, they're grown. Ezra Nay is God. Bless her. Amen. Ezra Nay will be 22 this, 23 this year. 24. This is 2023. She was born in 1999. Isn't it be 24 this year? They grown. They live their own life. I got to preach the gospel. I got to preach the living word of God in the name of Jesus. And the peace of God. I got peace with God. Which passes all understanding. Which, can, which surpasses everything from people that are ever learning. Because it's because it's, which because I can't understand why people that are ever learning but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth can't understand my teachings, which passive all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. Because I'm, I'm I'm trying to I want to know who's keeping y'all's hearts and minds today. I want to know what's keeping your heart and your mind since you call yourself a believer. I want to know what's what's keep because I'm gonna tell you right now because I'm, my my wife, my son, my daughter, my family members, my mom, my brothers, my sisters, my nephews and nieces, my uncles and aunts and all of my cousins, you can't keep my mind. My mind, you can't, my mind, no, none of y'all can keep my mind. My mind is kept through Christ Jesus, the living word of God. If you hate me for that, then you hate the very life that you profess to claim as yours. We have to, we have got to keep our mind through Christ Jesus. Keep our mind from what? Keep our mind from what? From every imagination of the thoughts of our heart that's on the evil continually. Roderick Red has an evil heart too. I got an evil heart. And so what I got to do, I got to keep my mind through Christ Jesus to make sure that I don't let what you imagining about me don't, don't begin to, to be alive in me so that I start imagining about you. Because all I want to, all I do, all I want to do is love you. All I do is love you. I ain't got a, I ain't got a, a negative word to say about you. Not a negative word, but you got to allow me to preach the living word of God. You got to allow me to do that. You got to allow me to do that in the name of Jesus. Roger Green has an evil heart too. In the name of Jesus, 1 John 1 and 8 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. In the, I got sin too, but I got to stay. Hallelujah. I got to make sure my life is governed by the living word of God and not by, the, by every imagination of the thoughts of my heart that's evil continually. Spiritual warfare... Is the battle between the imaginations of the heart, the seed of the serpent, versus the living word of God, the seed of the woman. Whose side are you on today? Whose side are you on today? Those of us on Christ's side are told to go into all the world and preach the gospel, preach the living word of God to every creature, to every creature. My entire family is a creature. All of my friends are creatures. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Preach it to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. I'm going to tell you, I love you enough to preach the living word of God to make sure that you get baptized and saved rather than the person that I love be damned. I can handle the negative imaginations that you have towards my ministry, not towards me. That's, I want to make sure I clarify that because this is where you need to help people. You, you, are, you don't know nothing about me. You don't know nothing about me when it comes to ministry. 
You know nothing because you don't because you don't see the, the the hours that I sit down to 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 study the word of God. You don't see the 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 the, the days of the week that I sit down to spend with God. You don't see me semi creating these PowerPoint slideshows to make sure that y'all get sound and clear. Not only the teaching for me, but you get to see what I'm saying. Because you know what though, because y'all got to, because you ain't got a problem putting on your on your TV when you know when you turn on your TV, you put them words that run across the bottom down there. So I'm gonna do that with my ministry. I'm gonna preach and I'm gonna put my words up so that not only can you hear me preaching, you can actually see it too. Is the living word of God your life? Or do you live by the imaginations of your heart? As a professing believer of Jesus Christ, if you are one, then why are you offended by the living word of God that I preach? If you are a professing believer of Jesus Christ, then why are you offended by the living word of God that I preach? Numbers 32 and 23. But if ye will not do so, if ye will not live by the living word of God, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and you can be sure that your sin will find you out. Because I preach the living word of God, and if you're not living it, I expect you to hate every word that come out of my mouth because I'm sure that Satan hates it. The living word of God exposes man's sins today through the preaching of the gospel, not Pastor Red. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It, the, the living word of God was, was here long before Pastor Red was born and it'll be here long after Pastor Red is dead. The living word of God not the law, because the law don't give life. The living word of God exposes man's sins today through the preaching of the gospel, not Pastor Red. Your imaginations, the forming of new thoughts and suggestions in the mind are blaming me but it's definitely not me. It is the time that I spent in the presence of God. It was not until Nebuchadnezzar saw them three Hebrew boys standing in the fiery furnace with Jesus that he realized that them imaginations that he had of making everybody bow down to him was a mistake. It wasn't until Nathan came up to David and exposed his sin for what him and Bathsheba did to her when they had committed adultery, had conceived a baby. And then the man wouldn't go lay with his wife, so David had him killed. The living word of God. The living word of God living in the prophet Nathan called David out. The living word of God living inside of your nephew, inside of your cousin, inside of your friend, Red, is calling y'all out. And because of that, you hate it. But you know what? But you you're not gonna don't don't you don't you're not gonna get you're not gonna get something from nothing. When you turn on your TV, you you expect to get something out of it. When you come on my services every Thursday and every Sunday, I'm I hope you come in expecting to get the living word of God out of me. I hope you're not coming to get a word that is pleasing to your ear. 
I hope you're not coming to get a word that, oh, why are you talking about us? I don't, I talk about nobody. If the word of God finds you out, you need to shut up and submit to it and stop letting imaginations make you think somebody talking about you. The word of God is examining you. The word of God is giving you the opportunity to turn from your wicked ways. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. The living word of God exposes man's sins today through the preaching of the gospel, not Pastor Red. Your imaginations are blaming me, but it's definitely not me. Jesus answered them. Look what Jesus says in John 10 and 32. Jesus answered them and says, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. Same thing I do every Thursday and every Sunday. Show you the word of God. For which of those works? For which of them over 300 messages that I got on my YouTube channel do you stone me? For which of them? For which of my teachings do you stone me? Which of my teachings do the imaginations of your heart want you to stone me for? Hmm? Which of the teachings of the imaginations of your heart want you to stone me for? What, which one do you want to stone me for? You can call me. You can text me. You can write me. I promise you, I will talk to you. Which of my teachings do you want to stone me for that you will have conversations about my teachings? Because you ain't got no conversations about our relationship because I know how I love you. I know how I love my friends and I definitely know how I love my family members. I tell you, I'm telling you, the only reason why I don't live in North Carolina today is because God told me I had to live in Augusta, Georgia, and now I know why. Because God said, you'd have got up there around your family members, you wouldn't have been as strong of a preacher as you are because you would have been worried about the way they think about you and the way they talk about you. And he said, then you can, then you'll love them from Augusta. I left home, I mean, this is, this is 19, this is 2023, 40 years ago. This is July the 19th will be exactly 40 years that I left home as a 17 year old. I will be 58 this year. 40 years that I've been missing and loving on my family from a distance. And all they can talk about is my teachings that I do as a minister. But I'll say it again. Before you open, before my family members, before you open your mouth and say anything negative about Pastor Red, you make sure you, 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 you look at Ricky Red. Look at your nephew. Look at your cousin. Look at him. Look at him before you began to hear him preach. If you would just look at me before you heard me preach, you will do nothing but love me. I want to know why you won't love me for preaching the living word of God that y'all raised, that I was raised up with y'all doing. It ain't my fault you didn't get past the, the, the calling on my life. Is of, a, is of a degree that, that you have not yet uh, been exposed to. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Here you go, Pastor King. I told you we was together this morning. I'm telling you. Most of today's born-again believers better start preparing themselves to hear the scariest words in all of existence. Depart from me. I never knew you. I'm telling you. Most of today's born-again believers better start preparing themselves to hear the scariest words in all of existence. Depart from me. I never knew you. Why? Because they live by the imaginations of their hearts 
and not by the living word of God. How can you find out if this means you? The mirror. The mirror. The mirror never lies. You know, then, 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 you know the next time you, you hear one of my messages and, it, and it's t stepping all over your feet and, and tying your toes up, before you have the audacity to speak my name out your mouth, before you have the audacity to allow an imagination to make you think negative about me, you better look in that mirror. You better look in that mirror and examine yourself against the living word of God that I spoke that caused you to react with such a behavior. Because our imaginations drive our behaviors and our behaviors reveal the life that we are led by. Behavior is the way in which someone conducts themselves especially towards others when they haven't done absolutely nothing to them but be led by the Spirit of God. Romans 8 and 14 For as many that includes Every creature that say that they Holy Ghost feel, that say they believer, as many as are led by the Spirit, not led by imaginations, not led by the imaginations of the heart, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I wanna, I'm trying to tell you, I want to know who, whose son you claiming to be. Because if you hate my messages, I can tell you right now, you are not a son of God. Because I know my messages. I get them straight from God. I get them from him while I'm riding to work an hour, 15 minutes. It takes me an hour, 15 minutes to get from my front door to the parking lot of the job I work at. I ride with no music on. I get in my car. I say, God, there is nobody but me and you. I shut my mouth. Speak to me. And that's how I come away with these messages. How can you find out if you are living by imaginations and not by the living word of God? How can you find out if this means you? The mirror. The mirror never lies. If you just look at yourself, you will never talk about me again. The mirror never lies. The mirror never lies. Your imaginations got you looking at me. Don't do that. Your imagination's got you looking at me. Don't do that. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. The Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. Because you know, because when, when, when the Lord sent Samuel down to Jesse's house, Jesse started bringing all the sons in. No, they were big, strong. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, y'all. Y'all want to look not on his countenance or on his height of his stature. Oh, that's just, that's just Ricky. He, you know, that's just, that's just Mr. Red. That's just Pastor. He ain't even got but 10 members. He ain't, he ain't no mega church. He ain't on TV. I don't, I don't see him holding no woman that walk loose conferences. I don't see him no mega church. I don't see him, I don't see him famous up on TV. No, I don't see him doing nothing for nobody. Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. For the Lord see if not as man see if, because we see with imaginations. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And that's the problem with y'all. Because I preach the living word of God, it exposes the sin in your heart and y'all can't handle my teaching. Anyone living by the word of God, anyone living by the living word of God has the anointing, the Christ life that tears down arguments and every presumption, every presumption set up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That's what we do. That's what we do. When you hear the, when, when, if somebody is, is teaching to you the living word of God, you need to receive that word 
and obey that word. And stop letting evil imaginations continually cause you to get with your family members and your friends. And, and did, did you hear? Did you hear what Ricky? Did you hear what Ricky preached about us? Did you hear what Ricky said about us? Did you hear what Mr. Red said? Did you hear Mr. Red's messages? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. It's a painful thing. It's a. I'm gonna tell you. I'm, for somebody to say it ain't painful is liar. I'm telling you, I got friends, I was in the, I did 22 years in the military. My life is military. I went in the military when I was 17. I retired at 42. I'm still in close relationship with my military members. My members, the members here are my, uh, the members that you see up on that board, them was the people, military people. We met in the military. We had a relationship with God together. We're still together. I still got military friends. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, it's people that I, that I, I joined masonry with. It was people that I, I mean, you, they don't talk to me no more. All because I now live the living word of God and they've heard me preach the living word of God. And today, Pastor King, I ain't even going to put my slide up that I normally put up. Where I'm beating up on the Masons. I ain't even got. I ain't even gonna put that up today. I'm, 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 God might do it on the next message because everybody wants to claim Christ as their life, but when they hear the living word of God being preached, they don't want to hear it and they don't want to live it. Stop presuming that preachers are talking about you when it is the living word of God finding you out. Why? To save you from the imaginations of your heart. Why? Because they are continually evil. Luke 11 and 13, Jesus says, If ye then, being evil, this verse is talking about me also, if you then be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? If the heavenly Father giving you the Holy Ghost, then I'm going to tell you something right now. You need to check your behavior. You need to check your behavior because behaviors reveal the life that we are led by. Behaviors reveal the life that we are led by. You can say you Holy Ghost, but you can say what you want to say. If you out there committing, as a married person committing adultery, you it reveals the, the, the life you're led by. You led, you, you're led by an adulterous life. And you got it from an evil imagination that you imagine that you could have intercourse with somebody other than the person that you made vows with, which is no different than the vow that you made. Watch this. You this the thing y'all but this is the thing y'all ain't getting. When you went down in water baptism, that was a vow. That was a vow. Water baptism is what married you to Christ. But all you can imagine is the fun times you can have with your professed saved family members with your professed saved friends you make sure that you just make sure that whatever you're doing with your when you do all of this stuff when you behave in these ways you just make sure that y'all be prepared to uh, spend uh, eternity together in the lake of fire since you don't want to since you can't handle the living word of God that I preach every Thursday and every Sunday. If you then be an evil, this verse is talking about me also. I know this, so I have chosen to live Mark 16, 15 and 16. If you then be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. See, see, know how to give good gifts unto your children. See, but know how to give good gifts. See, the Bible says in James is every good and perfect gift. See, 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 when I preach to you the living word of God, I'm, I'm giving you a good and perfect gift. 
See, the only thing a, a person in the world can do, that, you know, that dude, he gave you that, he, he gave you that good gift of, of, of roses on, 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 uh, on February the 14th. So you gave him the opportunity to have a intercourse with you out of marriage, and now you're going to get the gift of a baby in your belly. Get off my Facebook page. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm, yeah, 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 you know what y'all girls need to do, you need to start telling, uh, girl, when you gonna let me take you out to eat, you know what you need to tell them, oh, when the, uh, you can take me to McDonald's and get me a Happy Meal, you can take me to Burger King and buy me a Wampa Jr. with cheese, you ain't, I ain't, I ain't trying to do nothing with you, but if you, but since you offering to buy me a meal, I'll let you buy me a meal, I ain't trying to go eat out with you at, uh, Applebee's or, or, or Swartfish or, or the, Outback Steakhouse. I know what because I know what I know what you what what you what you've been imagining. I can just about imagine what you're imagining. But y'all, but I know y'all though. Y'all finna get it. You know I'm finna say it. But you know y'all, y'all stupid, stupid. Mm -hmm. You stupid, stupid. You you still falling prey to them old tricks. Them old tricks. Just because he riding around in an Impala with 36 inch rims on it, with 8 million tattoos on his body, with dreadlocks, with Air Jordan sweatsuit on, Air Jordan shoes on. But you know, but if you look, that dude, if you really look at his life, you'll notice he, he, he really ain't got no money. He ain't got no money, but you don't care, though. You don't care, you, because you live in the heat of the moment. And then just as soon as he gets you pregnant, just as soon as he starts cheating on you with somebody else, you get mad. You can get off my Facebook page whenever you're ready. I have chosen the life that told me to go into all the world and preach the gospel to preach the gospel to every creature. That is what going that is what I'm going to be hated for doing. That is what I'm going to be hated for doing. I'm going to be hated for doing exactly what Mark 16, 15 and 16 said. That is what I'm going to be hated for doing. Y'all gonna y'all hate me for doing Mark 16, 15, and 16. My family and my friends hate me for doing that. But you know what? But I bet you if y'all found out the Pastor Red, if y'all found out the Pastor Red was out there committing adultery on d if y'all found out Pastor Red was out there clubbing it up, going to strip joints, looking at women slide down poles with no clothes on. If y'all heard the pastor it was out there smoking marijuana, high off of cocaine, smoking vape, vape cigarettes. Oh, if y'all heard all of that, the first words out of y'all's mouth would be like, oh, and he, and he called himself a pastor. So since I don't do all of that, and since I call myself a pastor, when are y'all going to give me a break? When are y'all going to give ministers that preach the living word of God a break against them imaginations of your heart that's evil continued? What, what you want us to do? Let you stay in darkness in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 7 and 8, it says, the Lord will judge, not Pastor Red. The Lord will judge, judge, judge me, O oh Lord, according to my righteousness, according to what I believe. Judge me, O oh Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity that is in me. John 3 and 19 says, this is the judgment that light, the living word of God, has come into the world and men love the darkness, love the imaginations of their heart more than the light, more than the living word of God, 
for their deeds, their behaviors was evil. But evil behaviors, evil behavior, that, that, it's a, that is an evil behavior to judge a man of God for preaching the living word of God. That is evil. That is evil. If you got a problem with my preaching, then you need to find out, am I preaching the word of God or am I preaching what I want to preach? Because I know what I preach because I know how much time I spend in the presence of God to be able to come up here every Thursday and every Sunday while you out party harding Sunday through Sunday. I don't mess with your lifestyle. Don't mess with my preaching. Jesus says in John 15 and 18, he says, if the world hates you, know that it hated, that it has hated me before it hated you. I know that. I know you're going to hate me because I preach the living word of God. See, that is the living word of God says, if the world hates you, know that it hated the living word of God before it hated you. John 18 and 11, the living word of God says, shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? See, that's what I'm trying to say. Shall I, shall I not drink? Shall I not drink of what I ride to work for an hour and 15 minutes every morning getting from God? Shall I not drink it? And then come here every Thursday and every Sunday and give it to y'all? Shall I not? What do you want me to do? Come here every Thursday and every Sunday and give you something that I ain't been drinking from God, but rather me receiving from the imaginations of my heart? What do you want? What type of preacher are you looking for? What type of minister do you want to minister to you? Do you want a minister that's running around uh, dropping babies off and, 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 and don't want to claim them? Having a minister that's, that's, that's having intercourse outside of the, outside and won't get married? What type of minister do y'all want? I, I want to know what type. Y'all don't want a minister that's, that's upright and a good family man, a, a good preacher, got his life in order? A great cousin, a great nephew, a great friend. And the only thing y'all got to say to us is, 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 is hate us for the preaching the living word of God. May God be merciful to your behavior when you touch the anointing. May he be gracious to your mouth. When you touch the anointing. But I bet you I won't make another phone call back home. But I thank God I got six brothers and two living sisters and nephews and nieces. That when I go home, they flock to my mama's house to see their brother because they love him. I thank God that my brothers and sisters show me unending love. And when I go home, I refuse to leave North Carolina without making sure that my eyes behold all eight of them. I went home last week, February the 10th, for my mama's 86th birthday, and leaving, coming back down the road, I told God, I said, God, thank you. I got to see all my brothers and sisters that I love with all of my heart. I got to see them. It's a beautiful thing, because it seems like at my job every day, every week, the secretary is putting out an obituary where somebody that works at that plant is losing a family member. My love for my family is great. My love for my 
mama's brothers and sisters and their children is great. I love my six aunts and three uncles to death. My uncle Tom is no longer here with us. My aunt Jean is no longer here with us. My aunt Addie is no longer here with us. My uncle Skip is no longer here with us. My cousin Tidy is no longer here with us. Y'all better, my family better hear me today. I am very locked in on my family in North Carolina and Virginia because my love is strong for y'all. Very strong. And there ain't, a, there ain't an imagination or a spirit in hell that can make me say a negative thing ungodly word about now I'm one of y'all because my love for y'all is strong but my love for preaching the living word of God is stronger and if you don't like your nephew your cousin for preaching the living word of God then I suggest you never go to another church service again because you are wasting your time because if you can't receive the living word of God that your nephew, your cousin, is preaching, then you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. The Bible says a prophet is without honor and is saved in his own country. John chapter 7, it says, Jesus would not walk in Jewry, for neither did his brethren believe in him. The message that I preach cuts my brothers and sisters as well, but they still love me to death. If you feel my teachings contradict your choice of living, then by all means live it. But please do not let the imaginations of your heart disrespect the living word of God that I preach and that you profess to love and that you profess your love for. And that you profess your love for. If you feel that my teachings contradict your choice of life, of living. If you feel that my teachings contradict your choice of living, then by all means, live it. But please do not let the imaginations of your heart disrespect the living word of God that I preach and that you profess your true love for. Imaginations of the heart versus the living word of God. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. When are you going to cast down them imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God? Every time somebody says something negative, whenever somebody says something negative, about a preacher. Look at that preacher. I, I, I speak negative. I speak negative about Pastor Jamal Bryant's messages. But you can listen to it, but I never speak negative about Pastor Jamal Bryant. I speak negative about his messages because he because you got people flocking up in the new birth ministries to hear the living word of God and now they're hearing is messages on civil rights. Is that what, is that what your church do? Is your, does your church teach on civil rights? Do your church teach on tithes and offering more than they teach you the living word of God? Because tithes and offerings didn't come from the living word of God. It came from the law that was given by the living word of God. See, there's a difference in something being given by the living word of God versus you're in possession of the exact living word of God. Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law, but I come to fulfill it. We're talking about the living word of God versus whatever imagination that your heart can think of today. Everything that you can assume or supposed to be versus the living word of God. My love for humanity, my love to make sure 
that people who claim to love God, I have chosen to live a life that will make sure that you receive the living word of God that will help you to be prosperous in this world so that you will be a lender and not a borrower, so that you will be a blessing and not a curse, so that you will be a joy to be around rather than a complainer to be around, rather to, to be a person to uplift than to be a person to talk down. I'm telling y'all get around them people. All the, oh, girl, did you you see that ugly dress she had on today? You see that ugly hairstyle she had on today? You see them ugly shoes she had on today? You see that makeup she had on today? That's all you got to do. I mean, you, I mean, I mean, how? Um, you buy, you buy for you what you want to buy for you. You dress for you the way you want to dress for you. Leave other people alone. Because no matter how they dressing, no matter the makeup they put on, do you know the heart that's in them? Because all you can talk about is that person. But don't talk about what the people got on. Look at their behaviors. Because you know what bullying comes from? Bullying comes from people that don't like what other people look like. And so them people that they bully, they got such a, a meek and humble behavior. Because I'm going to tell you, because if a, if a person did not have a meek and humble behavior, you wouldn't bully them. Mm -mm. No, you want because you because you finna you you finna get something thrown at you. You finna okay okay go mess go mess with a person that that does not have a meek and humble spirit. Go go do it. Go bully a person that don't got a meek and humble spirit. Go do it. I promise you, the behavior you gonna get from that person, but you think you tough. You think you can bully somebody. Oh yeah, Pastor, can we get distracted from the outside? And God ain't thinking about the outside. God is thinking, but, but, but Pastor King, because, but what's on the inside manifests itself to the outside. You're gay and you're lesbian on the, gay and lesbian on the inside is going to manifest on the outside. The living word of God is a Cause that abomination. The, the Christ life joins no organizations. The living word of God does not get in organizations. The living word of God lives inside of living souls. It, but the living soul takes these imaginations and then that imagination drives its behaviors, and then them behaviors reveal the life that we're being led by because of imaginations. I used to be led by the imagination that, you know, if I was a Mason, that I would be something, and so I became a Mason. But when Christ called me out of darkness into his marvelous light, I came out of masonry. And I see y'all. I see y'all. I see I see it. Let me read it again. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day. You know what vex means? Disturbed, worried, agitated. Seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul, his believing soul, from day to day with their unlawful behavior. I'm telling you, it, 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 it vexes 
my righteous soul when other people who are professing to be righteous soul live with nasty behaviors. And I'll say again, I will stand in the presence of every person that I have come into contact with in my life in the entire 58 years that I've been alive, I will stand them in their face and I will tell them, you ain't got a negative thing to say about my behavior because I know how I behave myself around people. But when it comes to my ministry, I cannot help myself. I have to preach the living word of God in order to make sure that you receive the truth because without the truth, you will not be set free from the imaginations of the heart. The only way to get free from the imaginations of the heart is to receive and live the living word of God, which is the vine and we are the branches. And apart from that, you can do nothing. The only thing you will do is talk about me and my ministry. That's the only negative thing. I'm going to tell you, you make sure, all you people that talk about me, you make sure you sit down, get you out a big piece of paper. I want you to get a big piece of paper. Because the reason why I want you to get, I want you to get a small piece, but I want you to get a big piece of paper. The reason why I want you to get a big piece of paper is because I want you to see how stupid you look when you realize that you ain't gonna write nothing down. See, I don't want you to. I don't want you to have a, a little bitty piece of paper. No, I don't want you to have a three by five card because I don't want you. Because I want you to have a big old, big old piece of paper like the side of my chalkboard behind me because you're not gonna write nothing up there. I know. I know me. I know how the Holy Ghost rules my life. I know that. So for my aunts and cousins, my friends in the military that no longer communicate with me because of the way that I preach, I just want to let you know today, you can't stop me from loving you. You ain't going to make me talk bad about you. <clears throat> I can wait for you to reconnect with me again so that we can continue the beautiful friendship that we have. And I want you to let me live my life in Christ just like I let you live your life in, the, in thoughts and imaginations. And then we go on to the other side of glory. And then when we get to that side, we'll see if he says, I never knew you. Let us do that. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Minister Roderick Andre Red. I am the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries. We teach the living word of God here. The living word of God that died on the cross so that we may receive the gift of eternal life. I preach that here. What I preach here, how about you, rather than looking at me, Listen to me and then see where you fall short of those teachings. I love you, Brother James. I love you, Bridget. I love you, Pastor King. I love you, Sister Selene. I love you, Minister King. I love you, Sister King. Thank you all for joining me today. The, my sister Ann, those are the people I saw uh, comment today. Uh, 
Yeah. Y'all the ones I saw comment today, so I'm going to talk back at you. My father-in-law in Turkey, they can't understand the word of English, and I can't understand the word of Turkish, but he's, I guess he's here telling his son-in-law that he loves him. In the name of Jesus, the translation of the word, hallelujah. It says, my sweetheart. He calls me a sweetheart. I love my father-in-law. Thank y'all for joining me. Join Pastor King Tuesday night at 7 p.m. He's going to add on to this message. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Me and Pastor King, we're doing everything to make sure that the living word of God gets preached to the people that love God. Thank you for joining me. I love you all. God bless you. Amen and amen.